two years is a very long time but what does it really amount to as a software engineer today i'm going to be sharing with you the tips and the knowledge that i have over my two years experience but for that to happen i'd have to take you back to 2022 when i was still a graduate i'm on the graduate program for software engineering that was me first day reporting for duty i know skinny but that's not the point what did i really know back then before i got my job what was my experience well let's talk about it well i didn't really know much except object-oriented programming i was using python at the time i had also started playing with android studio i was using kotlin but lucky enough i managed to get myself a graduate program since here i am right i will not go over what i've learned as a graduate engineer because i already made a video addressing that Back to my training when I was still a graduate engineer. So we were trained to become full stack engineers. We started with the basics, HTML, JavaScript, uh, React, TypeScript. For the backend, we we're using ASP.NET. So we started with C Sharp, we did the boilerplate and ASP.NET Web Core APIs. So the way we were taught is by building projects, which brings me to my first point. Programming is a very practical field. It needs you to be hands-on. So build as many projects as you can. That's how you're gonna get your experience. Try avoiding to surreal hell. Just after learning something, go straight into building it and you'll get the experience you need. To find yourself a cool t-shirt like this, find the link in the description by drip.store. We create custom ones if you like. Find the link in the description and I'll see you with your order. Back to my current tech stack. I'm currently using TypeScript for the front end. I'm using C Sharp, ASP.NET Core to create RESTful APIs and I use Microsoft SQL Server for my databases. Now that I've mentioned my tech stack, I want to raise this important point, which is a major impact for imposter syndrome. You will never know everything. Depending on your role and the company you work for, you're most likely going to be exposed to limited technologies. And that's okay. You don't need to be the master hacker or know everything. We are all learning. So just focus on your tech stack and advance from there. That does not mean you should be limiting yourself to some technologies that will help you advance your tech stack. Focus on a tech stack and advance from there. It is very important to master the fundamentals first before you move to the next. Going all over will only just slow down your progress. The point that I'm trying to make is just focus on your tech stack and advance from there. And you will avoid any unnecessary imposter syndrome. Now let's get back to things that really haven't changed and the things that I've learned. First of all, I still hate debugging. I mean, I know, right? It's a major part of my job, but definitely still not my favorite. Secondly, some of these features need you to be a bit delusional to complete them because if you saw the requirements, you'll be like, hell no, just a tip. Planning your work is a very vital role to avoiding burnout. Have a life outside of tech which you look forward to because trust me, when the screen is all red, you don't want to be here. <laughs> but other than that, I've greatly improved in diagnosing errors and finding solutions. A special shout out to Google, ChatGPT, and Gemini. We wouldn't be shit without you. <laughs> I did mention that I'm working on the front end with TypeScript, so I was getting more hands on with TypeScript, which was something I haven't done since I was a graduate. That have been interesting. <laughs> I've greatly improved when it comes to planning my work, which means I'm more efficient and I sound more professional when I'm giving my timelines, because you don't really want to sound like you don't know what you're talking about on the stand up. Trust me. In the past year, I've been exposed to quite interesting topics and concepts i've been exposed to things like domain driven design design patterns a quite whole lot more that i'm actually looking into and i've taken the time to look at online courses to advance from what i'm learning well to answer the question what does two years as a software engineer really amounts to well in my case it amounts to being a junior software engineer well i'm very happy about that i'm not really rushing the process i think i have a whole lot more to learn i'm still looking into more things to learn before i progress to the next stage if you're on the other side of the screen and you're starting your career in tech whether it's ai machine learning data engineering whatever that you're into don't rush the titles just try to find the best way to do things there are a whole lot more resources online that you can use and be more hands-on don't get stuck in tutorial hell and i wish you the best of luck this has been me and i've been sharing my two years experience and what i've learned i hope you really found this helpful and don't forget to subscribe